Hey what's up guys my name is Avery and welcome to my channel today we have another video using SDL2 and in this video we're going to be setting up the keyboard and mouse input so this function right here it's going to be able to read what the user types in and where his mouse is being moved and what he clicks and before we get into that if you guys are new here feel free to subscribe to the channel it really would help me out and for everyone that's watching go ahead and give it a like thank you guys so much let's jump right into it So using SDL2, there's a few different options that we can use to get the user's input. And the first thing we're going to have to do is make an event, and let's call it E. And we're going to want to loop through it. So right here, we'll just do pull event, and we're just checking what is being pressed. So every single time we loop through, we're going to be just checking what has been pressed at that current moment. And along with that, we're also going to be making an array and we'll call this array uh, key states. So this key states will just be whatever the user has pressed at that moment. And we'll get the current key state by doing SDL get keyboard um, keyboard state and we'll pass in null. And if you guys don't already have this other part of the code that we're looping that we're using, it was used in the last video for SDL2 window. I'll Go ahead and leave that video pinned so you guys can go and check that out so you can use that to continue on this tutorial right here. So now just one example that we did in the last video. You can just do SDL type and you can do SDL quit. And that's just checking right here this little X button. And if that's done, we can just do running to false. Then I'll close the program. And we can also go ahead and check for keyboard states. And to do that, we just use a key state that we made right here. So we can just do if key states, and you can just pass it in right here. You can do SDL scan code zero, so that's zero button one W. You can put escape, just anything like that. So we can go ahead and do W. Say you're making a game. W means up, and we can just have it so it moves up. And we'll just print W out. And you can go ahead and just copy this line and change it to whatever you want. You can go ahead and reset it every single time to do a different function based off what you're pressing. But say you get into part of the application or part of your game where you don't want to just read one individual um, button and press, but you also want to read the player's input. Say he's making a new character in the game, you want him to type in a name, you can go ahead and type in a name. Or if you're setting up a chat, you want to type out a whole entire phrase. So what we're going to do for that is we can go ahead and make an actual string that's going to save everything that he's going to be typing. And we can just do SDA, std string input text. And just for the tutorial's sake, we'll just have it saved right in here. So it's going to be reset every single time. And what we're going to have this string be able to do, we're going to be able to click backspace to delete the last button. We're also going to be able to use copy and paste so we can set up control C and control V and then along with that we're going to just be able to log whatever we're typing. So the first thing we want to do is the backspace. So it's E which is the event. The key sim just like this or actually let's use the key state function. Key state array should do the same thing. Steal scan code and backspace. So when backspace is pressed and the input text is greater than zero, so that means there's something in the array, then we can remove what is ever at the end. So let's do input text dot pop back. And for you don't that don't know, pop back is just an array function that removes the last point in the array. Let's do else if. Right here we're going to be checking for control C for the copy. So you just do key states. Steel scan code, set that to C. And now we're also going to be checking for the control. So you can do SDL get mod state and K mod control. So now control C is being pressed. Now I'll just do SDL set clipboard and we'll just pass in the input text. And we just do 
convert it right here. And all right, now we're gonna set up the paste function. So let's do else if. We can go ahead and actually just copy this right here. Change the C to a V. And now we want to set whatever is on the clipboard to the input text. So let's do input text equals SDL get clipboard. And now if nothing's being backspaced, nothing's being copied or pasted, we can actually go ahead and write straight to the text. And we'll just do that by doing else if. And then e dot type is equal um, to SDL text input. So right now we're just checking to see if something else is actually being typed. And then we can addition it to the array. So this input text plus equal e dot text dot text. Now it's actually been added on to it. We can go ahead and just print out whatever is being said. So let's check to make sure the input text actually has anything on it. So this input text length is greater than zero. And if so, then we can print it out. Stick out input text. And we can flush it to the screen right here. So eventually in my tutorials, I'm going to be making using STL2 to use font and uh, texture to draw onto the screen. So eventually you're going to be able to actually type to the screen. But right now, this is just going to be showing you what you're typed and putting into the terminal. And along with this, before we test it out, let's set up the mouse. So this is pretty easy. We just create the mouse variables for the coordinates. And then we just need to pass them in, references to those, and it'll, it'll be able to save it. So get mouse state. Just pass in the x, and then we'll pass in the y. So now it's just going to read where the mouse is at, the coordinates, and it'll be able to set it there. Along with that, we can also go ahead and set up a way for your the buttons on the mouse, the left and right buttons to be clicked. And it's just as easy as the other parts. So you just do if e dot type the STL mouse. You do mouse down or up. Up means it was just released. So mouse button up. So it's just released. And then we can do e dot button dot button. And if that is equal to SDL button left. So you can do right and left for the two mouse buttons. Right here we can just go ahead and print out the coordinates. So every time you click the left mouse button, it's just going to print out the current coordinates of the where the mouse is. So now we've got this finished up, let's go ahead and check it out. All right, see so it's compiled. And now, like I said, for now, it's just going to be printing out to the terminal. So let's pull the terminal out here so we can see what's done. And we had it, so we, if we click W, it'll display W. So right here, we just click W and it displays W. And if we were to just type regularly, it'll display what you're typing. <laughs> Alright, so that's basically it. We're going to be covering further more detail and more use cases with this in further videos. So if you guys are new here, feel free to subscribe if you have any questions. Um, leave them in the comment section. I'll get to them as soon as possible. And I also have other tutorials similar to this using OpenGL and SFML. So if you guys are interested in learning them as well as SDL2, go ahead and check out those videos as well. But thank you guys again so much for watching and see you guys next time.